Hey there, Lick and Riffers, and welcome back to another awesome guitar lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which you're going to learn how to tweak your chord progressions so you can better solo and improvise and practice your soloing and improvisation chops over them. And all it takes is one little tweak. I call it the outside chord. And I'm going to give you several examples on how to add that outside chord to take your soloing a little bit outside what you're comfortable with and make it a little more sophisticated. Now, there's the complicated way to do it and there's the simple way to do it. And I'm going to show you the simple way to do it because it's a game changer. It's a game changer. It's going to blow your mind, okay? And I'm going to use the Blue Lava guitar because it has a built-in looping station. It has built-in effects and it also has a built-in amp. So I am going to use this Blue Lava guitar, the same guitar that one of you is going to win at the end of August, okay? The Lick and Riff Summer Guitar Giveaway is going on right now. Okay? You can add your name to the raffle, you can join my Break Your Boundaries program, the link is below in the description. And you can use a looping station or record yourself on your phone and play it back or on your computer, whatever you use to loop yourself okay? and record a chord progression is of use here. Okay, so I'm gonna record myself into the Blue Lava guitar. So the first chord progression that we're gonna use is this, okay? It's D, D over C, G over B, Okay, and G minor over B flat. That's the outside chord here because it takes us outside the D major framework. It turns everything basically into D minor for a second. And then we're back to D. So D and then D over C. Okay, I open the E string and I put my finger on the fifth string instead on the third fret. And then it's G over B, okay? Three and two on strings two and five. And then I move my finger on the fifth string from two to one. Okay? And then I have D again. So I'm gonna record this loop into this awesome guitar. Okay, I'm gonna up the tempo a little bit. And let's start. It's gonna count me down from four, four, three, two, one. Hey, okay. now listen to what's going on here. sound good. Something didn't sound right because I kept playing D major over the G minor chord. And that doesn't work because then we get this. It's a nice chord, but it doesn't work as a solo. We get that extra F sharp note and it just creates a mess because it's not supposed to be there. Remember D major turns into D minor. But instead of thinking about it as a scale, let's just add the chord into the mix, the chord itself, G minor. Okay? And all I did was to add G minor, okay? the arpeggio of the chord itself. And then, yeah, you arpeggiate the chord and it leads you melodically back to D major. Okay, how beautiful is that? It also adds a little bit of chromaticism. So you have G minor on 
10, 11, and 12, you have G minor on 6, 8, and 7. You have G minor on 3, 3, 3, and 3. Okay, and all those are right next to D chords. And all you have to do is to add that little chord arpeggio, okay, and you do it all over the place. You have D major and G minor. color around the chord. You don't have to change your scale. You don't have to think about, okay, now I have the D major pentatonic and then D minor pentatonic. Okay? Because it will sound pentatonic. I want you to think about the harmony. Okay? The harmony leads the way. So another chord progression that you can try it with is somewhat of a Spanish flavor, because I know how much you Lickin' Riffers love the Spanish guitar flavor. So um, let's do it in... Hey, this doesn't sound Spanish, but it will in a second. So uh, let's, again, let's up the tempo a little bit. Let's try 90, I think that's good. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so I'm gonna play F sharp minor. Four, three, two, one, so. Okay, so what's going on here is um, F sharp minor, and then E, and then F sharp minor. And then F sharp minor again, and then it's C sharp seven. Now it's not exactly an outside chord, but it's gonna be an outside chord when we solo. Um, so I'm just playing C seven up one fret. So let's solo over it. So I want the Spanish flavor. So what I'm gonna do is this. Now, why is this a Spanish flavor? Because, as I showed you in the how to play all seven modes with one shape, I'm using the Dorian shape here. And this serves two purposes. Two purposes. It makes F sharp minor sound very interesting. It makes E sound interesting and it makes C sharp um, 7 sound Spanish because with F sharp minor okay, I'm actually playing F sharp minor if I'm playing the Dorian shape on 7 okay so now the Dorian shape makes the F sharp sound interesting because it highlights very interesting connections inside the scale instead of me just using the predictable pentatonic place where the chord is. I'm not. I'm using the Dorian shape, which gives it a slightly more interesting feeling. Now, C sharp 7 becomes Spanish because then the scale, the Dorian shape that I'm playing on the seventh fret becomes a Phrygian flat five scale. It becomes the Phrygian flat five scale for C sharp. Okay, we have C sharp and C 
the same shape, the exact same shape, gets a completely different context. So remember, you're in F sharp minor. Until... of that outside chord, okay? And the right choice of notes. Now, the last chord progression that I'm gonna show you is gonna sound weird at first, okay? It's F sharp minor and A minor. F sharp minor and A minor. And I'm gonna tell you why in a second, okay? let's. Take it to 90 once more. Eh, even 95. Yeah, 95 is good. So, one, two, three, four. going on here what's going on here is that you're gonna use the exact same thing okay but this time you're gonna play the Dorian shape on seven and then you're gonna use the same shape two frets down and this creates a lot of chromaticism because if you notice what's going on here is that you have seven, nine, and ten. And when you play it two frets down, you suddenly have five, seven, and eight. So basically, when you change keys, you suddenly have all four notes here. And this makes it really, really, really interesting. extra chromatic flavor and that chromaticism is what makes it sound sophisticated so there you have it okay? a little tweak that makes your practicing soloing and improvisation a lot more interesting and way 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 more challenging it sounds so much better than just playing those pentatonic shapes and those predictable guitar sounds all the time. And this is how you do it. This is, uh, this is a pro trick and uh, you just have to get used to that extra chromatic note. The moment you get used to that extra chromatic note, a whole new world opens up to you. So thank you so much for watching and check the link in the description and who knows, maybe you'll win this awesome Blue Lava guitar at the end of the summer. I can't wait to see you inside my Break Your Boundaries program. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Have fun.